Good evening and welcome to the Express Tribune platform. We have Riham Khan with us today. Riham, uh, welcome on the show. And uh, firstly, I would like to congratulate you on the upcoming show that you're about to do. So how do you feel returning to Pakistani media landscape again? I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous as well because uh, I've not uh, really been on TV as, as a presenter for a very long time. But, but this you know is, the job. Uh, yeah, it's like riding a cycle, you know, you never forget. But it's, it's, uh, I, think, I think the audience is going to like it because it's going to be mm. a little bit different than what I've done in the I past. See. This is something that I've always wanted to do. Uh. So I think you'll enjoy it. How do you see the current uh, political situation of the country? Because there have been accusations that the, the censorship has been unprecedented. You're about to jump into the same bandwagon of the media. So what if you're censored down the line? I think that um, uh, it's, it's ironical because, I mean, I remember uh, the time that we spent during General Zia's time as well as, an, as you know, mm. just, just as uh, audience. So I don't think that's unprecedented at all. Censorship has always been a problem in Pakistan, of mm. course. Uh, the powers that be decide, you know, sometimes they decide that they want to go right and sometimes they go mm. left. At the moment, I think there isn't as much censorship as people are complaining. I, I think that there is a lot of subliminal uh, messaging. Um, certainly, I have a few concerns about it. What I'm doing is, is not going to be, I think, of an issue because because I think people will probably mm. um, not have a problem with it because I'm mm. not interested what politicians are doing. I'm not interested what mm. uh, you know the policy but you makers have to do are a doing. Political show, so you have to be intrigued. And by well, it's affairs. not a political show per se. It is politics for me. The, the water you drink is politics. The, mm. the air you breathe is politics. So, so the, the fact that this whole political you know these uh. these hunger games they are so so disappointing and so boring for me i'm just going out in the superficial public to say it's not only superficial i know too much so when you know too much you don't really want to be coming face to face with them so i expect I no censorship because uh, i've survived for so long because i, I know how, how the you, system works how do you face the slander you know the abuse or uh, the flack on the social media because you have been targeted in the past as well you know, I, I think that I just am very dismissive about it. People shouldn't be. Of course, it's a huge problem. But it takes but a toll on the mental health, isn't it? It, I mean, I, I've been very blessed, I think, because I know where it's coming from. I know that it's paid. I know that there are certain agendas. So it's never affected me. I know it is a huge issue. I, so it's I think not organic. It's all paid. That's what you Much of it is. Initially, it is not organic, but then of course it's it's like anything. You know, if if uh, a lot of people are abusing you, then other people do jump on the ba bandwagon, and of mm. course it's a power uh, game as well. So I've never been mentally affected, emotionally affected, because I saw how it's done, mm. and I also think that for me, when someone is abusing or slandering a woman, particularly, yeah. I I feel that it must be resisted, that it mm. must be, uh, I must. Uh, show uh, the face of resistance because for a woman to be shamed is mm. the only weapon they have Absolutely That's what they do in South Asia. What are they mm. going to do? Yeah. They're going to say that you know um, uh, This this uh, mm. image or this persona what she's saying is un-Islamic She's going That's to say it. that it is it is corrupting society. So I don't I don't I don't follow that who makes those mm. rules I'm here mm. to defy the rules and I think that it's I very see. important for me to uh, to be the face of resistance yeah. because this happens to our young women in society across the board True. in the social media menace is not only directed at me or at politicians or indeed journalists and anchors mm -hmm. it's across uh, society it's good that you have been able to cope up with it but seeing the post ninth may pakistan do you think the civil liberties have been curtailed up to an extent i think ninth may is is uh, unique uh, in in the way it's um, you know it's uh, unrolled in front of our eyes so at i think at least we that can call that unprecedented right <laughs> That is unprecedented, actually, because a lot of people would have been put away for a lot uh, mm. less. I was looking at some of the um, recent um, articles and then comparing them with, uh, there was a time when Farooq uh, Sattar yeah. uh, was put away because he was organizing, organizing and listening to a mm. speech that was broadcast um, in one of their mm. um, their, their jalsas and, and uh, he was, was put away. What was your first reaction, to be precise? Were, were you shocked, taken by surprise, or did you see it coming? I was angry because I could see it coming. I could see it boiling over. I knew that the intention was for uh, civil unrest. I knew that there was lots of money being poured in, and I knew that they were aiming for a coup mm. in the army. They yeah. were um, they were hoping for um, uh, for mm. a complete um, instability and chaos across the country. And I I could see it sort of being planned from March onwards. But do you call Mr. Faz as a perpetrator as well? 
or not? I don't think it can be one person. I, I think that would be unfair to say that it's one person. I think it must have been uh, quite a few people who were part of the design and it takes mm. a lot of orchestration. Mm. I think they used innocent people as collateral, 950 people mm. put away for no reason uh, and nobody was going to win this. this well, and we must be yeah. very clear that this was not done to in any way put the PTI chairman in power. This yeah. was done to create civil unrest and mm -hmm. to attack the military rank and file. But what it did was they achieve out of it? Because they have, ta they have taken the bashing after that. They are in the hot waters now. Alhamdulillah, at least we uh, saw this, that it was curtailed. But it could have gone, it could have gone the other mm -hmm. way. I think that that's what I think. That things should mm -hmm. never be allowed to exceed to this point. And I could see that coming. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, this is what I'm saying. PTI was led to believe that this is for them. I it see. wasn't for them. I think that the, the risk isn't over. I don't think that we're out of it yet. Mm. There will be other elements that will be continually af affecting mm. and attacking the deep mm. state I and see. affecting and attacking the military. Mm. And you can clearly see that those people who were not part of the vote of no confidence, yeah. the new uh, top command was not part of the vote of no confidence. I the see. top three people are new in. So it doesn't mm. matter who it is. The names are irrelevant. True. It doesn't matter whether it's the General Asim Munir or whether mm. it is whoever's the DDC or whoever's mm. the DGI. Mm. The target is China containment linked. It is oh. to create unrest. It is to create anarchy. And PTI has just been used uh, as mm. part of the game. And now that PTI is over, there will be other elements. So well, we have to be vigilant. Believe it was an American conspiracy. You are calling it a conspiracy against China. It's a Quite China containment policy. You have to understand that we uh, are st of strategic importance vis-a-vis uh, mm. -vis the CPEC. Mm. And uh, this has been delayed. So PTI had been used mm. as a means to delay um, mm. the CPEC and anything which is, you know, uh, CPEC related mm. or China related, which is why so we then haven't he, then seen... He must, then he must be in the favor of the American uh, bloc then. Why is he bashing the Americans himself? Well, I mean, a lot of people That's say one thing. I mean, I can't, I can't make I sense of it. Politicians are known for their hypocrisy. I think PTI um, has probably been, been, you know, the the, um, the the typical example of that. So mm. uh, just because they're saying that the Americans are against mm. them, uh, why are they lobbying with American lobbyists there? Mm. If they're against you, why are you appealing to them at the same time? How so are they so good in manipulating people on social media? Because you have been saying it. They are very good at manipulating people on social media because there's a lot of money yeah. and investment and planning. But and other I'm parties are not bankrupt. They have money as well. Why don't they? They don't have that much money, and they. They. I, I think, think like other parties, PMLN, for example, and PPP. Yeah. PPP is actually nowhere in the race at all. PMLN just going the wrong way. I think they have yeah. absolutely no idea. I. I actually think that the way they have glorified. Mm. the PTI and mm. glorified the PTI chairman that has actually been counterproductive. Mm. So they have no idea how to build their own PR. I'll give you an example for the 16-18 mm. months that the PDM was in power. Yeah. We never saw the Prime Minister Shaiba Sharif mm. on, on social media. Mm. A lot of people did not know who the Prime Minister was. Yeah. Is that not the PMLN or the PDM's responsibility? Mm. All we saw was the PTI chairman's face. Isn't so, that a strategy failure on the part of PMLN? Absolutely. I then think they are clueless. I think they have absolutely no clue. And particularly when you have the uh, Pakistan television network behind you, and if you look at the, the I think, a couple mm. of appearances by the Prime Minister, particularly mm. the first time we see the Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif mm. on screen, shoddy, shoddy, I think. And, and, and why is that? And because his, Urdu is, his Urdu is very complex as well for people to get. It's not, it's not him. Yeah. I mean, you have to connect. I do not buy this, you know, their, their, um, their explanation mm. or their excuse, I'd say, rather a lame mm. excuse. They say that it's because uh, we've been working, we don't do the social media. I'm sorry, this is a PR position. But is it all about You money? can't say that you're yeah. a big journalist and you won't appear on TV mm. to tell your story. Yeah. Everything is PR. You are in a position of public relationing mm. as the prime minister. Mm. So if you cannot do that, mm. you're literally the face what of the want, state. What if they want your advice after the show? Would you accept the offer? I've been offering advice. Uh, right, left and center. Mm. And this is another thing. I think that within the PMLN, they have lots of people who have the right idea. I'm not mm. volunteering at all for that position. I, I don't want to do that. But I'm I think they're intellectually lagging behind as well because well, why can't they, they hire anyone? They don't understand the, the science of modern technologies. But why can it's they not, not hire money. professionals? I have said mm. this to the Pakistan People's Party. I've, had, I've said this to PMLN. I've said it to everyone. Yeah. Hire professionals. 
you do not need someone who is a uh, political candidate mm. uh, aspirant or a ministerial aspirant to do mm. this job for you. Why are you doing it yourself? There are people who know how to do that. Digital mm. analytics or social media marketing they is a field. They have hired a lot of XPTI people as well. They haven't been able to help. <laughs> well, I think the ex-PTI, the, the ones that they have hired, and this again is, you know, rather, um, um, you know, I it's see. insulting to their own party workers. I think it's, 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 they, uh, again, I'd say they're clueless. I'd tell them to spend a bit of money and uh, spend less money on other things, spend okay. money on their into, PR packaging. Going into 2024, how do you see the elections going on? Because there have been accusations of pre-poll rigging. Do you see them coming? I think pre-poll rigging uh, is, is um, uh, the wrong terminology here. Mm. I think that everyone's very nervous. I can tell you that the people are very nervous. Mm. Uh, say, for example, for the PMLN, they're not giving the tickets to lots of people who I think stood by them and were mm. deserving. So those people don't know whether to go to the Pakistan People's Party. Mm. And it's because it's not pre-poll rigging no, that I'm seeing. But why are they seeing. so petrified? Because no, no. The, the floor well, is open for them. No. Nobody is there to challenge them. I don't see this as pre-poll rigging. I think that everyone is very nervous about about they everyone's looking towards the so-called establishment mm. they are they are confused about which way and whom are they looking at yes and they are keeping everyone confused mm. and so I think there isn't any pre-poll rigging they are actually keeping mm. everyone on mm. tenterhooks everyone mm. is on the edge of their seats mm. and nobody knows this is like you know it's it's like you know uh, when when in cricket the selectors uh, sit for mm. for the selection yeah. uh, but they don't tell you till the last minute who the selected is mm. so I think it's that's what people are feeling like and I don't True. think it's pre-poll rigging I think people are compromised mm. I think they want to portray themselves and present themselves as puppet mm. but my advice to them is that we've already seen the ideal puppet you can't be better than mm. um, the gentleman who's been put away so do please you has develop a spine. Deal. Do you think Nawaz Sharif has reached a deal? I think Nawaz Sharif is wanting to be exonerated I think he mm. wants his name cleared I think he's doing this so that his daughter has a fair mm. chance. But he has and lost I, that public appeal he used to have back in 2013. I think the public appeal he hasn't lost. People are, mm. to be quite honest, people are not interested in who the PM is going to be. They don't care. So it's they don't a, care it's who the Chief Minister Punjab is going to be. Mm. They are concerned about record inflation. Mm. They are talking about 31.4% mm. uh, inflation. That's, I mean, a record high in September. So and now we're looking at uh, the end of next year, perhaps mm. a slight dip in it, but we don't see an end to it. So people, so people who are uh, struggling to pay their energy mm. bills, mm. they are looking towards not who. So they're dismayed. They're, they're not they're looking out of the at political. who is going to be the PM. They yeah. are asking, and I'm asking on their behalf mm. as well, yes, you say that you'll do it, but Come. how? Tell us the how. How are you going to do it? Do you have a plan? Right. I don't see a plan. If you're going to be constantly Fine. taking cash injections like you've been doing before, mm. and you, you've just seen the caretaker prime minister mm. uh, going to Kuwait and going to UAE, and mm. this is not the way forward. But this this is not the how. Their dynamics have also, uh, you know, Failed? No, well, failed. you didn't see well, any. It, it has really harmed uh, the party's image of being the intellectual stability yardstick that they used to have. Now they are suffering because of the same narrative. If Isaac Dar returns and takes the financial decisions again, we are going to suffer again. That's what people say. So that's what I was trying to say, that Nawaz Sharif hasn't lost his popularity. It's not Nawaz Sharif. It's the fact that the 16 year, the months uh, that they were in power, mm. uh, they have taken a dent on the fact that, you know, people don't have any faith in them mm. uh, about the decisions that they took uh, in the finance ministry and the decisions that they took vis-a-vis -vis the economics of the country and you True. cannot say that we couldn't do that that is not something that you say mm. as a politician mm. and they will be forgiven again you have to tell us you have to tell the public mm. how you're going to do it you True. tell us so there from now plan. yeah there isn't okay. a plan have you heard a plan i haven't heard a plan what do you think about the books you know because they keep coming before the elections people accuse that it is all staged and you know it is all uh, it is all mag magnified as well because it's irrelevant but taken to the media and it is forcibly being made re relevant just to harm a, a single personality. How do you how do you see this? I think it's it's an unfair comment. Obviously, I, I um, am, am deeply hurt by uh, that sort of suggestion because when my book came out, uh, there was the whole establishment, mm -hmm. uh, powerful figures. I was told that if you speak, mm -hmm. if you so much as think of publishing a book, you'd be taken out.
mm. and so I thought that this is like a so the odds literally were deadline. You, odds no, were it was a you. literal deadline. I was told that you know uh, you'll be taken care of if if you do this. So I decided that this is the time to do that. There but, was a time. But you still uploaded the book on the social media. Muzamil, there was a time where silence is betrayal. But mm. when everyone is, you know, when someone is the underdog. You don't do that. That's not my style. So now any book coming out, mm. now anything else is actually harming. I think it, it is actually uh, not, mm. it's counterproductive. I feel that it's not helping the situation. Mm. In fact, you need to also understand, I was looking at your tweet and I completely mm. agree with it, yeah. that people who support him mm. uh, are uh, living, you know, they think mm. that he's, they're living vicariously through yeah. him. This is everyone's dream. Mm. So you're actually <laughs> further glorifying it. This yeah. is the dream of every young man or even older men but who want you, to who want trust, to do that. Did you trust the claims of Ajra Khan when you saw it on TV for the first time? I don't think that the woman is lying. I don't think that this was the way to do it. Mm. And I don't want to comment any further. I didn't see the event. I saw the scale of the been, event. People have been saying that she has been facilitated in a way that the inauguration was massive. She couldn't have afforded that. Well, side. nobody did a book launch for me. <laughs> nobody, uh, you know, um, none of these journalists. I mm. saw people sitting in the front row. Are you thinking and I to remember, it? Pardon? <laughs> Do you plan to relaunch it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's a term we have been hearing. Yes, uh, but I'm not. I'm Raham Khan, so I don't take U turns. The True. the the Lastly, there is no point uh, of it now. I Lastly, did it when yeah. it it was mm. meant to be done, mm. and the book was about. Uh, the dealings, mm. the, the, you know, the lots of cases in in the mm. book which uh, people are now talking mm. about. Lots of characters. Mm. It is not a book about mm. one person. It is about parenting and how people destroy other people's lives because they're unhappy. Fair. It's about megalomaniacs across yeah. the world, and mm. it was about Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and how they were True. failing us. You, you have been keeping a very close eye on international situation as well, being a broadcaster and uh, being someone who has been associated with international media. How do you see the Israel-Palestine situation going on? Because there are certain people who say that Hamas called for it, you know, they instigated the, the sleeping monster. Who do you blame in this situation? You see, uh, for, for Palestine, we need to be very clear about the fact that when people talk about democracy in Pakistan, and when, pe when people uh, in the West talk about teaching us dem democracy, uh, it's the, I've, I've, you know, I'm not a fan of Western democracy because mm. I remember during the Iraq war, I was one of uh, the few people who actually marched. Mm. Uh, um, and there were quite a few people then as well. Nobody listened to us. Mm. Uh, Tony Blair did not listen to democracy and mm. went to war um, and did what the U.S. wanted. And mm. once again, there are a million people marching every Saturday mm. in the U.K. People are protesting in the U.S. The Jewish community, mm. uh, Jewish uh, rabbis in the U.S. Mm. and the U.K. are calling for a ceasefire. Mm. So whatever is happening is not democratic. Mm. It's not only shameful that uh, the Tory party in uh, the leadership uh, under Rishi Sunak, of course, uh, we didn't expect anything different from them. Uh, UK Gov polls say 76% uh, of UK population wanted a ceasefire yeah. and you chose to disregard that. Uh, uh, what is really hurtful is Labour leadership. Mm. Under Keir Starmer also went that way, and that, that case, means that means that there, there, there's no yeah. democracy. You're Same not listening the to the people. With, with the Democrats under Joe Biden. Absolutely. So there is no difference, and I say that that you know there is always the deep state, mm. and people across the world will be the face of the mm. deep but state. But shortly, is Hamas a force for good? Not in. Uh, we have to be very clear where. In, in the Palestine conflict, you have to be very careful about and clear about the side that you pick. And I'm mm. very clear, I can tell you the side that I pick. The mm. side that I pick is that this is not, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. No. Mm. The Palestine issue is, uh, in my eyes, has been mm. created. Mm. If you go back, mm. uh, right down to the First World War and, and you know, so the Second you World War. So I think, no, I do not. I think that the Palestine issue is uh, is is something which didn't happen on the 7th mm -hmm. of uh, November this has been decades of Palestinian people I they see. need to be free mm -hmm. Gaza is for fa Palestine it is it is mm -hmm. literally a case of land grabbing mm -hmm. by Israel and anyone mm -hmm. who supports this and mm -hmm. anyone who yeah. says that they're the aggrieved party mm -hmm. I am at least not for them. I believe that the Palestinians and the Palestine cause is something that we should have mm. stood by. Mm. It's something that um, the Middle East and, and mm. us also in Pakistan, I, I think we've never stood by them. Mm. Uh, we've not even, we've stopped even paying lip service. Right. I found out recently that somebody was um, 
told to take a sticker off uh, the cricket bat yeah, for supporting Palestine. Yeah. And I cannot believe that, that you would do that in Pakistan. So, I, you know, a lot of respect for those people mm. who are non-Palestinians, who are non-Arabs, who are non-Muslims, and there are but lots of sensible the people who are supporting it. And yeah. shame on us. Mm. Thank you, Reham, for uh, giving us your precious time.